everyone, this is the Arch Fiend, and boy, I promised you guys a part two of my theme park rant, and that was all the way back in April, and I've never made it yet. So guess what we're going to do tonight? We're going to give you that part two right now. And boy, it's been about a week since I made a rant video, so why not do something that's well overdue here for you guys this evening? Now, of course, if you haven't seen part one of my theme park rant, you can look at it right underneath here. It's linked as a video response and you can check that out at your own time and leisure you don't need to necessarily watch one before the other they don't really continue off of each other so basically what this is going to be is my concluding thoughts about theme parks and just some of the people that go there some of the people that work there and just some other things that piss me off um so without making this any longer than the first video was we're just going to cut to the chase here there's one thing that i hate about the majority of theme parks that i've been to to be fair some theme parks don't do this and that's when you walk in through the gate and you see that line of people. You guys who go to theme parks know what line of people I'm talking about. It is not a line of people that are patrons in the park. It is a line of employees. And what are these employees doing? This is what they're doing. Whoa, guys, stop right there. Everyone get in together. I'm going to take a group photo of you guys. All right, there we go. Everyone smile. One, two, three, cheese. What is that shit? Are you kidding me? Now, I don't understand why, and more specifically, the Six Flags franchise seems to be most diligent about this. Why is this considered a good business practice? I've always hated this. I've never talked to people and says, boy, that was nice that they're offering us a souvenir picture right off the bat. Like, it's always seen as a negative, yet it's been done for years in theme parks. I mean, it just is fundamentally wrong on so many levels. Um, for one, it gets people in just like a bad psyche of Big Brother's watching you because we're watching you right from the front gate. I just, I, I don't want to really have that impression when I go to a theme park to have fun. And on top of that, it's basically their way of saying, guess what? We're going to charge you for something that you might not necessarily want the second you get through the door. It's like, whoa, slow down. We will spend at our own pace here. Please don't try and look like you're just going to just throw priced up items at us right from the get-go. And another thing that I always have a problem with is that just the, the general language that these people use. It's never in an asking manner. It's always in just a demanding, we're going to take your picture. It's never like, hey, would you guys like to stop for a souvenir picture here? We can pose you by the fountain or by the landscape of the roller coaster here. It's always, whoa, 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 guys, all right, everyone move in. We're going to stop and take your picture. It's always, we're doing this, not do you want to do this? Yeah, that bugs me. It always bugs me. So here's my solution to this, people. When you walk into one of these theme parks, and you're going to see those people there, um, I, it doesn't matter how understaffed the entire park is, they will pull at least 10 employees out to take your picture at the gates. It doesn't even matter if the business is slow as hell. They will have 10 employees at that gate to take your picture. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. So here's what you do when you see these people. When you walk in and you see them, the second they turn to make eye contact with you, Right as soon as they open your their mouth, pull out your camera, go, whoa, stop right there. All right, just, go, could you guys move in together? All right, all right, all right, right, one, two, three, cheese. Take their picture. Then after you take their picture and just like totally cut them off as they're speaking, walk up to them and be like, can I have $10? I took your picture. And then when they try and laugh about it and be like, ah, oh, no, see, we take the picture. You go, um, just start hitting your hand. Start hitting your hand and say $10, please. So, yeah, throw, throw it back in their face and, I don't know, get, get a laugh out of it with your friends. I mean, people might get a kick out of that. So, um, unless you genuinely want the picture, of course, which you're perfectly well within your right to just, you know, get the souvenir picture, which is fine. But, um, yeah, I never liked this. Never liked that. And you know what? I don't think I found a single person on earth that was grateful that someone took a $10 souvenir picture. And $10 is really rough estimate. Sometimes it's a lot higher than that. Yeah, so that bugs me. Another thing that bugs me in these theme parks is getting into the theme parks and seeing a really cool ride. Like one ride that I'm sure you all have seen that go in the theme, the people out there have gone into theme parks, I should say, is 
that little ride where you're like strapped on kind of like a hammock and sometimes there could be three people on the hammock like they kind of like face down using the hammock for lack of a better term and it kind of like rocks up and then you kind of just pull a little rip cord that's attached by your back and you swing down and you like pendulum back and forth and it's like a free flying superman type thing okay do you guys know what possible beef i could have with a ride like that some of you probably said it already here at home it is called an upcharge ride now for those of you who don't know what an upcharge ride is it is a ride in a theme park that you have to pay to get on it's not covered by the standard fee that you paid at the gate no 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 and the majority of parks have several of these upcharge rides and i'm always like what the hell is this about could the cost of the ride not be covered by the the entrance fee now i partly understand why they do this and that is because these upcharge rides would if they did not charge for them they would basically have an extraordinary fee attached to them well here's a very very simple way to just overcome that and be somewhat magnanimous as a theme park in the long run simply just have some sort of sign up area for the rides say at opening or whatever or maybe you could book a spot on the ride online have any number of ways that you could go about it for free so that you could have you know x amount of people sign up for it from the time of 10 30 to 11 then 11 30 to 12 etc etc there's so many other ways you could go about this and not look like total jerks just having to charge for this ride. But they have to. And it's rides like that that just get a steady flow of people. It's just another way to sucker money out of people. How could you pay extra to ride a ride in a theme park when you already paid what was presumably a $35 to $50 entry fee, depending on what park you went to? Never like that. Never like that. And there's a, a million ways they could go away, go about doing this for free. Because like I said, if they didn't do it for free, then there would be like, you know, 100 people waiting on the line. And these are usually rides that have a long waiting time to load and unload. So yeah, I understand that you can't just make it free for the general public. But how about on rainy days where the park's dead? You just let whoever you want walk on. How about you be nice like that? Could, could that be something you could do? No, theme parks couldn't do that. Anyways, upcharge rides, um, not a big fan of them, not a big fan of them. Another thing that um, I'm going to kind of not so much pick on the theme park itself, but this is more the people that go into the theme parks themselves. There are a number of roller coasters in this country, and certain ones have just a level of intensity to them that there are very strict standards for how you get confined to your seat. One of these rides, I'm going to give you an example, is El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. This is a ride that has what's called extreme e ejector air. What ejector air is, is when a roller coaster goes up and peaks on the top of a hill, the G-forces kind of push you up out of your seat and make you feel like you're about to fly out of the seat. So for that very reason, you have to be harnessed in very securely. So, there is strict standards for how far the harness has to be pushed down against your pelvis and hips in order to ride the ride. So what places like Six Flags Great Adventure did is for rides like this and King Ka and a number of other rides, they have a little tester seat before you even get in the line. You can sit in this tester seat because people of, shall we say, exceptional girth, might not be able to ride the ride so they can go over to the seat and if you push down it has a little red light and a green light that indicates whether or not you can just physically get into the ride and get the harness down on your waist far enough so if the red light stays on you can't ride pretty much every single time i've gone to great adventure and rode this coaster someone of exceptional size walks up to the coaster gets in the attendants push everyone's harness down, pull the seat belts, go through like you know whole monotony of checking every single seat, hold their thumbs up at the end of the train. The head technician at the main table says, "Locking error cart C two or whatever." 
Sure enough, it's the person of exceptional size. Then the attendant comes over and will try and push on his harness, or her harness to be fair. Push on the harness to try and staple him down to make sure that the, that the harness is down at a safe level. Because if it's not, you risk the chance of imminently shooting out of your chair and dying while the coaster is going. I know I said chair, it's technically a car, but I know the coaster geeks will pick on me for that one. So, yeah, the one intended will start pushing down on it. She'll hold her thumb up, or he'll hold her thumb up. Lead tech will say, no, it's still not clear to go. Then the other attendant will come over. They're both pushing on it. Then it usually ends up to where they can't get it down far enough. In some of these coasters, you have little isolation locks where they can just undo the seat and let you get out. But on some coasters, they're going to have to explain to the person, say, I'm sorry, you can't ride this ride. You're going to have to leave. We can't physically allow you to leave the station like this. So some of these coasters have to unlock every single seat because there is no isolation mechanism to lock one car at a time. So now, not only did we waste all our time trying to double fasten this guy in with two attendants and fasten everyone else in, we have to wait for this person to get up, get out, and then every single train and car and passenger has to be pushed back down, pulled into place, checked, double checked, and why? Why did this happen? Because the dumb son of a bitch got into line because he didn't even have to get in the line because all of this would have been remedied if he just did what the park supplied them with. All you had to do is get in that test seat, see if the little red or green light could go on. People, I've seen this happen all the time. It's not something that's exactly rare. So yes, even some of the people that go to theme parks piss me the hell off. And another type of person that pisses me the hell off are these people in theme parks. For, you know, some theme parks they have a separate water ride section and a theme park section that is dry rides, for lack of a better term. In all these dry theme parks, you'll always find something like a massive water ride or log flume, what have you, that gets you soaked from head to toe. Okay, I do not know what is the rational thought process that goes through the mind of these people that rides these rides. Um, a lot of them come into the park without a change of clothes. I understand if you come in with a change of clothes, you want to ride some water rides in the middle of the day, change into something else, and then go on the rest of the rides. That's fine. No problem with that. I dig that. I've done that myself. But there are these people that will go on like a Roaring Rapid or a Log Flume type ride first thing. They will get their jeans soaked. They will get their shoes and socks soaked. They will walk around all day baking in the sun. And trust me, people, when the clothes start to dry and they start to cook in the sun, log flume water smells worse than shit. And just who are these people that say, oh, I want to walk around with soggy shoes all day. I want to walk around smelling like a skunk ass. Please sign me up for that. That sounds swell. And another thing that is about these people, like I said, a lot of them will wear jeans or whatever. They'll go right to a coaster after this. They'll sit down, have a good ride in the coaster. You'll go to that coaster, sit down in the seat they left on, and you'll be soaking wet. This is like, this is like the people that complain about like the secondhand smokers. It's like, why do you have to, you already ruined your day by walking around in some dank wet outfit. Why do you got to inconvenience other people? It's like, go to a water park or go to a theme park with a change of clothes if you're going to ride a water ride. And on top of that, a park like Cedar, Cedar Point is adding another water ride to their park next year. I just saw that yesterday. What the hell is that about? It's a $10.5 million ride, too. It's another ride just to get some dank, wet, smelly people walking around the park that are probably going to be miserable and bad attitude because they're walking around with their toes soaked all day. And I don't blame them. I'd be pissed too. But you know what? They made that decision to get on the water ride. They should have had a change of clothes and socks and shoes and all that. Holy shit. What is with some people that go to theme parks? I always wondered that. Why doesn't Cedar Fair just, or excuse me, Cedar Point just build that new water ride in their water park section? I mean, I don't know. 
it's a nice ride to the park, don't get me wrong. But, what the hell? Put it in the water park. Last thing we need is more people walking around that are soaking wet. Anyways, people, um, yeah, that's the last few notes I wanted to cover on my theme park rant here. So, I don't think there's going to be a part three. I've talked quite well long enough here. So, um, everyone, uh, enjoy your theme parks. And I'm actually going to Cedar Point next weekend. So, I'll give you guys a report on that. So, expect a video or two from that in the near future. And, um, yeah, have a great rest of the summer, all one week of it that's left. Take care, everyone.